Does your Honda Odyssey battery go dead while it sits in the garage? When you charge it up, it drives fine, it doesn't stall on the highway. You check your charging system, your charging system's doing great, but the battery just won't hold a charge. Maybe you put a new battery in it and it still goes dead overnight. Well, I think I have a fix that may really benefit you. Stay tuned. This van has a parasitic drain, you know, basically uh, the battery drains out when it's sitting. So why am I doing it on this one today? This one has a 3.3 amp draw, it's got a really high draw, and uh, I've got a weird clicking noise. I figure, you know, a clicking noise is awesome, I'll be able to trace that down because you can hear what's staying on. Um, so basically, what I've done is I took a little uh, power outlet, I know that side's ground, I put it on ground, you see the battery's disconnected. And I can take these with me, and I don't have to worry because it's on the ground. I can touch this on anything. I'm not going to short anything. You can just click them together, and then just uh, track down whatever electric component or motor is causing the draw. I've got the keys sitting on the driver's seat, so I don't have to worry about that. If you're wondering what that sound was or what it was, it's an AC compressor engaging. It's getting power from who knows where. I'm guessing it's probably a relay that's stuck. That's affirmative. This is the relay for the AC compressor clutch. Um, this is the relay for the condenser fan. I think. Condenser fan or radiator fan. I don't know which one's which on this. It's just pictures. It doesn't really say. Um, see that one's got a little fan or whatever and then that one's got a little fan for AC okay so that one's the condenser fan that one's probably the radiator fan that one's the AC compressor so I pulled that out and tried doing the same thing I do my little uh, test leads together and there's no more ticking and clicking and then I put it back in and again there's no more ticking and clicking so I know that the and the thing is is all three of these are the same they're the same part number so you can swap them and test with a known good one and determine what the deal is. So anyway, for those that are curious at home, that's how I found this problem and that's how I did it. So this is the relay that I pulled out. This is the culprit. And we're just gonna cut it open and take a look. Now why don't I just pop the cover? Why am I cutting it? Because it's glued. <laughs> that's about the only way I know of to get in. So I'm just gonna cut around this way, this way, and this way. And why am I cutting it at this funky angle? Well, because my line of sight's right here. I want everything to fling away from it. Whew, you can tell I got into the metal because these are starting to get hot. Shootsy scores. So looking at this, um, you can see the magnetic coil on it. You can see a resistor there, and contact. It's actually really hard to see because it's in the bottom, I think. Normally these are oriented the opposite way uh, due to constraints. You can see the contact right inside there. I was hoping to show where they're burned and stuck together, but I'm not able to do that just this way. Um, let me get a battery and let's show it in motion, and then I'll know where to cut next. The way this relay works is a little bit different than most. All you need is power and ground um, to make this one click over. You can see that the contact's right there. I got a bunch of the cut plastic out of the way. So your load goes through this. And you have positive and ground, so you get signal and ground here. And that's what switches it over. So I've got these both positive, so that I have power being supplied through it. I have power here. I'm going to take my power probe, so there's nothing here right now, there's no power at all. And then what I'll do is I'll clip this on here so that it's connected, so that's like the AC compressor switched on. And now, of course, that reads power. You can see it's indicating. And if I turn the speaker back on, you can hear it. Let's take that off. Let's just have it on. I've got enough hands I could probably do this. So basically when this is getting sig it should have ground. I don't remember the way the circuit works exactly. But basically it's an electromagnetic switch and it just sends the power through this loop here. So what happened was for for whatever reason this uh, was stuck in the closed position like that all the time even when the key was off 
and power goes to this all the time even when the key's off when the key's turned on and you can tell what's what because you can look at it with the cover off but you can also tell that this is a lot bigger surface area so you're going to have a higher amperage flow through these uh, versus through these these are just the switch ones and then this is the load so either this one's po positive all the time or this one's positive all the time and then the other one sends it to the AC compressor clutch or whatever it is it could be a fan or you name it but basically that's what happened um, so we're gonna tear into this we're just gonna really murder Kate it and uh, look at those contacts and see how they may have been become stuck I'm not sure exactly what was stuck in there because when I pulled it out it unstuck and that's why I was able to really tell that it was this apparently this is a known problem this is the first time I've run into it um, but other people have certainly run into it before and have uh, told me all about it so the contacts made right back up in here this is where the switch is so it has enough leverage uh, to get it in there let's uh, look at those contacts see what they look like one thing I didn't mention earlier in the video I did in the week on these uh, jumper cables that I do I always do them a different length you can see how I've separated them to this point but you see they're different lengths that way when you flop them out they just basically don't touch and so these this is the business end. this is the end that I use I don't know why more companies don't do that I noticed that that was done on my uh, little power jumper kit I'll leave a link in the description for that I'm gonna have so many links in there holy crap got a lot of content floating around out there though okay so let's just get to that what's the easiest way to do that probably the easiest way is to get rid of this first of all so pull this up from the back side so here's one contact it actually looks pretty good I don't know this configuration very well but I will after this ah here's our smoking gun so looking at this one you can see that it's pretty well blacked out you can see where it's been arced and then on the left side you can see where it got stuck it actually welded on there so this little guy is the point of failure that caused the draw could have burned out the compressor had we not caught it in time and today we're talking about parasitic draw testing and the subject vehicle we're working on is a Honda Odyssey and the AC compressor clutch is coming on when it's not supposed to now I've already determined that it was the relay that was bad um, you saw a little bit of that testing on Wednesday if you tune in Wednesday but I'm going to give the rest of the story as Paul Harvey might say uh, today so what you do is you use a multimeter take off the negative terminal because it's easier to deal with this because you can touch other things and uh, touch it with ground that you can't do it if you do it through the positive you can do it through either way but you have to really walk on eggshells and make sure you don't touch your leads on anything else and ground out and short things through your meter um, on your multimeter you'll notice that there's multiple places to plug in your uh, positive some will have four some will have three on mine you have three and this one is for doing amperage testing uh, you see where it says uh, DC 10A or DC 10 amp and then this one over here um, it shows uh, voltage uh, resistance you see the Omega and the V that's voltage and resistance milliamps battery and continuity you can see the little tone thing for your continuity test so you set it to uh, 10 amps plug this in for 10 amps and then check it here you should have no more than 50 milliamps and you gotta wait for it you know it'll really take a little while your computers just got hooked up they got woke up and then they turn back off so we're at we're clear down at like 30 so we're in great shape there's always a little bit of draw for the computers in standby mode so we've got a fix we're not having a parasitic draw anymore um, when I first hooked it up it was 3.3 amps not milliamps not 30 milliamps it was amps so that was a pretty good uh, draw but that's how you do that just real quick and dirty I'm not going to go real long on this video and then uh, I'm just going to share with you the same thing that I did before this is how I determined where uh, the AC compressor uh, problem was and then to test for the relays all I did was look on uh, the thing here and determine that my uh, you see the little snowflake that's air conditioning sometimes they say AC 
um, but I looked at that one and once I saw that one you know I pulled it out I just take uh, my handy dandy little Leatherman Crucial which I still need to do a review video on I love this thing um, but I took that out and then just tested again I tested with my leads by touching like this and I didn't have any more clicking and so I know I'd isolated it to that circuit and then I looked to see okay well this is an Omron and it's an 0618A11Q where else do I see something that looks like this well the radiator fan one is exactly the same the condenser fan one is exactly the same so I rotated them through and it worked out but basically the contact in this one got stuck and because it was stuck um, even though it wasn't getting signal saying connect it was uh, just staying connected and so the AC compressor clutch was on basically all the time and that's where our draw was coming from even with the key off isn't that crazy yes it is um, so anyway we need to get a new relay for this and we'll be in good shape what's funny and the way I know that's the contact is after I pulled it out um, basically once that load was off it was able to come undone and now it's clicking on and off appropriately the way that it should So the only way under heaven and earth that that could happen is if a contact arced together so that's how we fixed it um, if you're doing a parasitic draw test and you uh, want to just really find things quick there's a couple of quick things you can do you can take your leads and uh, say you got everything hooked back up the way it should be you can take your leads your positive and your negative and see what the voltage drop is across all of these you look on the back side of any fuse you've got tabs on each side you can look and see if there's a, a, a voltage or a drop or an amperage flow between those um, you can pull the fuse out and test the tabs but you can go across the top there's just a there's a ton of things to do but that just narrows it down quickly because you have all of the things uh, the circuits all laid out in front of you you have an explanation of what the circuit is um, you can pull a fuse out and then go back and do your uh, your test there and see what your parasitic draw is how many amps you're uh, drawing um, another thing you can do nice thing about with the leads is you can take one of these a lot of these uh, fuse boxes are underneath there so you just take this baby, it's got rubber all the way around, just slap it on the windshield and that way you can be down in there um, with the door closed somehow or just uh, get one of your little clamps or something and clamp your uh, door pin button shut see like on a Honda, see am I all good to open the doors? I am so you got the thing back together on a Honda you got your little uh, door thing here see what I'm doing with the little light by uh, pushing it so you just take a clamp you gotta get one that's big enough you can clamp these shut sometimes you gotta pull the little bulbous uh, thing off to have something to grab by but anyway you get the idea I got bigger ones too or you can use a wood clamp the clamp on wood clamps and just go that way see if I had a big enough one it'd be cool they're clear on the other side of the garage so a little uh, tip for you man so many tips today good things I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything um, this should be good enough information to be able to get you where you need to be and uh, like I say you have this uh, your your multimeter sitting on the windshield or propped up you got a kickstand or something I'll put a link in the description where you can find one of these these ones are nice because they're automatic they're a little more user friendly than most uh, but you just basically look at that get your uh, needle nose pliers or whatever and just start pulling fuses pull a fuse put it back in and be looking at where your multimeter is you know just you know check it and see what causes that uh, draw to go away and then just narrow it down from there but usually it'll be a motor or a bulb or a switch or a relay something like that something that's supposed to connect and disconnect that won't so you can kind of narrow it down to the circuit and then narrow it down to the component I hope you enjoyed the video I enjoyed making it these are just really cool tips that uh, just really help diagnosing things go a lot quicker and easier you don't always get an audible clicking thing that's kind of nice it's like a little bird chirping I'm over here I'm over here uh, but you can you can narrow it down um, 
by, like I say, just things that are supposed to connect and disconnect. But uh, it's fun when it's something that actually clicks, like a relay, or in this case, a compressor clutch. If you haven't subscribed, doggone it, I hope I've earned your subscription with this video and you'll click the subscribe button. Why should you subscribe? It's free. It notifies you when the videos are posted so you can keep up with them. And uh, uh, why do I want you to subscribe? Well, the more people that subscribe to my channel, the more Google says, hey, this guy's got some good content. So it'll send more people my way. And that's actually part of my job nowadays is uh, I'm spending more time and money on this uh, because it's helpful, it's productive, it's just the thing to do. So it helps me in my job, helps you to you know, know when the videos come out and it helps other people because of the content is able to be found by more people. Any other questions? Leave them in the comments below. Cheers.